Hello, dear friends, and a warm welcome. This lecture is about mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is the smallest bacteria, but it is important clinically. In this lecture, we will study about the general features of mycoplasma, biochemical and cultural characteristics, pathogenesis, clinical features, their lab diagnosis and control. First of all, we will study a bit about the classification of this bacteria. The bacteria is classified in the class molecules. The order is Mycoplasma tails and the family is Mycoplasma TSC. We are going to study in detail about the genus Mycoplasma because it is clinically important. We will also study a bit about the other genus Ureoplasma, its cousin. The genus Mycoplasma has 110 species. The seven species are found in human. The most important one is the Mycoplasma pneumoniae. At the end of this lecture, I will give you a key, a diagram, looking at which you can easily memorize this bacteria. This key is specially prepared for the students because they often get confused between different bacteria and they are not able to remember the characteristics of the unique bacteria. So watch this lecture till end. First of all, the general characteristics of mycoplasma. These are smallest free-living organism measuring 150 to 250 nanometer in this size. They are called mycoplasma because they show the fungal-like plasticity of the shape. These are pleomorphic. That means they can exist in the cockite, balloon, disc, ring or star, different types of the shapes. They are different from bacteria because they don't have a cell wall. They have a plasma membrane which is trilaminar and it is unique because it contains the sterols. Sterols are not present in bacteria but they are present in the plasma membrane of fungi. They also don't show the gram reaction and they are also not susceptible to number of the antimicrobial agents because they don't have the cell wall and hence they don't have the polymer which is peptidoglycan. They are different from viruses because they do not need a host cell for replication. The spores, flagella and pili are absent in mycoplasma. They multiply by binary fission. Clinical significance of mycoplasma, they causes a pneumonia and hence they are also called PTL which stands for pleuro-pneumonia-like organism. Commonly called the Eton's agent because it was discovered by Eton. Usually, these are associated with mucosal surfaces present in the respiratory and urogenital tract. Now, uh, structure of the mycoplasma. The mycoplasma are simple in structure. They have a cell membrane which is composed of sterols. They don't have a cell wall and their nuclear material is simple. It is a small genome consisting of the double-stranded circular DNA. They have the ribosomes which are 70S. The staining characteristic of mycoplasma, remember they are not stained by the Gram staining method but they are stained by the Stimsa staining method and we can also observe them by the scanning electron micrography. So this figure is showing variable forms like the white forms, the ovoid forms and the filamentous long forms. The biochemical characteristics of mycoplasma, these are chemoorganotrophic they can use glucose or arginine as a source of energy. They require cholesterol and other steroids, which are incorporated into the membrane. They have the antigens, which can be the glycolipids or the proteins. How do they differ from the other bacteria? They differ from the other bacteria because they have the steroids in their cell membrane. 
they share no homology in their DNA with the known bacteria. They also have a low G plus C content in their nuclear material. They have a low molecular weight genome and they cannot revert back to the walled forms. Now, there is a question for you. You have to write the answer in the comments. I will reply back to each and every comment. The question is, what are two differences between mycoplasma and L form of bacteria? Pathogenesis of mycoplasma. For the attachment purpose, this mycoplasma, they have got a unique protein which is called the P protein because of which it attaches to the receptor on the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract. They exhibit gliding motility and they have the special filamentous tips because of which they can burrow in between the cilia present in the respiratory epithelium. They cause inhibition of the ciliary movement, ciliostasis they causes. Then they also cause the necrosis in the respiratory epithelial cells. They have special affinity for respiratory epithelial cells. And additionally, they produce a chemical which is the hydrogen peroxide. And they also produce a toxin which is called the CARBS toxin, stands for Community Acquired Respiratory Distress Syndrome. They can be intercellular, they can get endocytized, they can also penetrate, they can invade deeper into the tissues. And they also evade the immune response and also resist the antibiotics. For cultivation of mycoplasma, they can be cultivated either on the liquid or solid medium. Optimum temperature in between 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. They require the enriched medium, enriched with 20% horse or human serum. The colonies, they have the unique appearance, which is called the fried egg appearance or the biphasic appearance. The center is opaque and the edges, these are the translucent, like that of the fried egg. For staining, the dense method is followed. The block of agar containing the colony is cut out and placed on the slide. Then the staining solutions, they are added and observed under the microscopes. The colonies can't be picked with the help of the platinum loop. The subculture is done only by cutting out an agar block with colonies and rubbing it on the fresh plates. The epidemiology of the infections caused due to mycoplasma. They are the commonest cause of the community acquired pneumonia in the patients below 40 years of the age, most commonly seen in the age group 5 to 20 years. The incubation period is 1 to 3 weeks. The spread is by the inhalation of the large particles or the aerosols, which are shedded by the patients and they are released in the air and then inhaled by their close contacts. So this infection is seen to spread where there is very close, like in the military, in the barracks or in the prisons or in schools and colleges. The clinical features of the mycoplasma in the pneumonia is called atypical or the walking pneumonia because it has the features which are not severe. There are the features which are less severe. There is the gradual disease and the disease takes several days to weeks to develop. There is a low-grade fever, a malaise, a persistent dry cough, headache, chills, scratchy throat, the sore throat and the trachea tenderness. The less common symptoms are the pain in the ear, muscle aches or pain in the chest. Sometimes there can be extra pulmonary symptoms. These are because of the autoimmunity. For example, Stephen Johnson syndrome in which there is a rash of the hands. For the diagnosis, the clinical symptoms are 
thought swabs or the respiratory secretions, they can also be collected. The first approach for lab diagnosis is the culture. Culture is done either on the liquid medium or the solid medium. The medium should contain the glucose and the indicator phenol red. On the solid medium, it shows the typical fried egg colonies, which are the biphasic colonies. Growth is slow, appears in 5 to 10 days. There is acid production in the medium, which is detected by the indicator, the phenol red. The colonies, these are beta hemolytic and they can show the absorption of the guinea pig RBCs also. In the tissue culture methods, when these are cultivated, the cell receptors are destroyed by the neuromyelitis and they also inhibit the motility in the tracheal organ cultures. The serological methods, they are usually used for the diagnosis of the mycoplasma infections because, because culture takes a lot of time to appear. In this case, the patient serum is checked for the appearance of the antibodies against the mycoplasma antigens by the non-specific methods. The first approach is called the cold agglutination test, in which the patient serum is mixed with an equal amount of the 0.2% washed human RBCs which belong to the O and it is incubated at the low temperature. The clumping is seen at a low temperature of 4 degree but not at the 37 degree Celsius. So that's why it is called the cold agglutination test. A title of 1 is 32 is indicative of the infection. The next serological method is the method which involves the streptococcal MG test. The patient serum sample is again mixed with a streptococcus MG, which is heat killed, incubated at 7 degrees Celsius. The title of 1 is to 20 or more is suggestive of the infection. For molecular diagnosis, polymerase chain reaction PCR is used and it is used for the accurate diagnosis but not written for the clinical practice. The radiographic findings in the mycoplasma infection. There are the multifocal bilateral diffuse infiltrates which are seen and occasionally the patient they show the lobar pneumonia. The X-ray picture is quite worse than the clinical picture. So that's why it is called as the walking pneumonia because the patients, they are not showing any severe symptoms. But when the x-ray is done, then it shows since the diffuse patches of the infiltration. For treatment of the mycoplasma infection, the antibiotics which act against the cell wall, they cannot be used. So the bacteriostatic but not the bacteriostatic antibiotics they can be used, which are erythromycin and tetracycline. The cousin urea plasma uridicum. These are the some strains of mycoplasma which are frequently isolated from neurogenital tract. Initially, they were called the T strains or the T form of mycoplasma. Now, they have been reclassified as the urea plasma. The species is urea laticum because they can hydrolyze urea, which is essential for the growth of this bacteria. They also require the cholesterol in the medium. They can be normal flora in sexually active individuals found in genital tract of both men and women. They are also associated with diseases in the human beings, including the non-specific urethritis, infertility, chorioamnioitis, stillbirth, premature birth, and in the perinatal period, pneumonia, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, and meningitis. Now, it is the time the students, you will be awarded by this key picture, the diagram looking at which you can easily remember this bacteria. You can see this is MP, standing for mycoplasma pneumonia. And since it is showing the shoes, so it causes the working type of pneumonia. The bacteria lacks the cell wall. It is, the infection is acquired by the inhalation. It is pleomorphic, showing different shapes. The cell membrane has 
the infections they are acquired by inhalation and particularly seen in the crowded places like offices prisons college after the bacteria enters it forms a p pointed structure because of which it attaches to the tracheal epithelial cell it gains entry into the lungs it causes the patchy pneumonia there and sometimes also the steven johnson syndrome you can see the rashes on the hand it produces the card toxin and also the h2o2 for culturing when we culture on the solid medium then it shows the fried egg by phasic colonies for the diagnosis the cold echolocation test is used in which there is clumping at the low temperature but no clumping at the higher temperature to 70 degrees celsius for treatment macrolides tetracycline and fluoroquinolone can be used so this is the easy way to remember this bacteria hope you have liked it thanks for your attention bye and take care stay tuned